Doodlebot here. We're all looking for a modern pen with flex. That's a reasonable price that doesn't railroad. Well, let me just start this video off with a pretty serious nib torture test. Don't know about you, but I would say that is a pass. So this is the fountain pen that came to me from The Good Blue. I hadn't heard of them before until Sunil Malkani, the owner of the company, reached out to me. I got an email. I was actually in a Starbucks picking up a coffee after we took the kids out uh, to the pumpkin patch to get a pumpkin. Got an alert while I'm waiting for my drink and he connected with me, likes my channel, and is working on these. He just has this brand new polymer feed uh, so this is his own feed that he makes. It's, it's built here into the pen as well. This is an extra nib unit he sent me to test out. And so I was pretty pretty jacked to uh, get a brand new pen with a brand new custom feed that's not available anywhere else. So we're going to run you through this, talk to you about it. So first, the case. Uh, this is what I came in. So it's got the Good Blue logo on here. This looks very much like a little pencil case tin that a kid would get. And he gave me a bit of a write-up on that. Just a, a lot of the materials are like locally sourced, recycled or upcycled, right? Repurposed inside. This is like a, a wool felt that's on there as well. It almost looks like insulation from a car, like the under matting for the insulation in the car. That's what it reminded me of. Anyway, so pretty basic, except if you're an engineer and you look at this and go, wait a second, I see drawings, I see dimensions. And I checked this out and saw 63 millimeters. And I looked at the pen and went, oh, that's the dimensions of the cap. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, it says here A, and there's, there's another A over here if the full drawing was there. And it says section AA, scale one to one. So if we can get this in the camera, if I put the pen right on there and do a good job of lining it up, that's a perfect drawing. It's a one to one scale of what's going on. So if you look inside the pen, you can see a few bores in there. So this tells me that everything's being dimensioned off this front face. The first bores, 40 millimeters in, 48, then 55. So just kind of cool stuff like this. This is the drawing looking at the pen cap. This way you can see it's got this flat spot. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But you can just see, okay, they went down this from the center point to the edge. That's 6.6 .6 millimeters. We got a uh, M12, if we can get a focus, M12 by 1.25. So it's a 12 millimeter, 1.25 pitch. On that thread so just little cool things like that you might not notice it but i just thought i would explain to you what that is and this is something i go oh that's cool but let's get back to the pen so i showed you the feed when it's brand new it's white when you ink it up it takes on the color so if i use green ink the feed would turn green so that's pretty cool this is an all metal pen so this is aluminum we got brass in the middle um the aluminum's quite light. The, the brass gives it some weight. But what's really cool, even here, I got a little Allen key. I was just doing something. I thought, where is the center line, like the center balance point of the pen? If we can get it, it's tough to do this. Oh, look at that pretty quick. Should I touch it? Oh, there we go. It's so touchy, but it's balanced, like pretty much dead nuts in the center of the pen. So the center of the mass is right there in the center of the pen. So good attention to detail. Um, we got this flat spot on here. So this is the uh, full, just raw version. There's also a, I think they call it like a satin finish or, or something like that, where it's essentially just put through like a, a, a vibratory finisher part. So there's this big drum and there's some uh, like typically ceramic media in there and it kind of vibrates. You put some liquid in it, kind of gives it like a matte sort of satin finish on the material. This is just the straight raw right out of the machine. So you have to be doing a good job on there. And it's got this flat spot on there. So they want it to go clipless, keep it sleek and smooth. There's a lot of clipless pens out there. That's a big trend I find right now with fountain pens. But the challenge is they roll away on you, right? So you can have, of course, if you push this hard enough, it's going to go. But it will stop, and it's got a flat spot. So you can also just set it down on your desk like that. Don't have to worry about it going away on you. So that's kind of a nice feature where it's incorporated uh, right into the pen. So the fit and finish on this is really nice. This is made, he told me, in a Swiss lathe which, again, has nothing to do with the pen unless you're a guy like me who loves that type of stuff. I always wonder what type of machine something was made on. So a Swiss lathe is really cool. 
Um, typical lathes, you put your your stock into the chuck and it spins, and then you have your cutting tools to you know form and shape the part and cut threads and all that. On a Swiss lathe, the uh, your media is put in, your tubing is put in. It's got a super cool chuck where it actually feeds the material forward and backwards. And then you have tools that are actually rotating and put your details and cut all your, your tool paths onto the parts. So they're really uh, high precision, super expensive lathes. It's not his own. He's renting a shop. He rents time on the machines, right? Pays them to machine the, the pins for him as well. Those are usually a lot made for real precision stuff like uh, watches and stuff like that. As far as like little uh, details and finials and stuff, there's not much going on because it's just a smooth uh, tube that we got going on. Like I said, the flat spot, we uncap it. It's uh, pretty quick to undo. I think it's less than a turn. What have we got? Yeah, about three quarters of a turn. This is a, a tricky thing to do. So when you close the pin, you gotta have everything line up. So um, it's actually gonna dictate the thread you use. You can't have a multi-start thread for that really. It's gotta go to the same location every single time on the front and on the back of the pin as well. And then this has to get machined off afterward. That's just a cool detail. Um, pops off real nice again. No uh, little graphics or inserts to speak of there. Then we're on to the section. This whole part here is brass. Well, let me just take this whole part off here for you so you can see it. So we got this brass part here, fits the converter inside, it houses the nib and the feed unit. Um, metal section, again, sometimes you're worried about metal sections being slippery. I don't, I don't have that challenge with this pen. I find how it sits is, is quite comfortable. Now, when I first saw the pen, you're seeing this too. There's, there is a significant step down from here to here. And I was like, Oh, how is that going to be? I don't know. That's, I don't know if I'm going to like that. And actually it's totally, totally fine. It doesn't bother me at all. It's far enough back. It doesn't bother me. I have some other pens like my, uh, Twisby VAC 700. They have a pretty big step down on theirs. And for me, just where it sits, it's not overly comfortable. Um, but for me, this is no problem at all. With my hand size, this flat spot is actually perfect. I hold it right here in my thumb and it is ultra comfortable. So I don't have any issues with that because we go from a fairly large hammer down to a thinner one. Um, I actually like that this is here. So I just, this is how I hold it. Unposted, it doesn't post. You know, it goes on, well, yeah, it doesn't post. Um, but it just fits in there nicely. It's got enough length on it that I don't need to post it. Posting it would be too long anyways and probably back weighted, but it's it's a comfortable writer. That's, I was a little worried about that, how that would feel, but I have no challenges with that. If we get you in close here, you can see it says here the good blue that's put right on to the grip section here as well, which is cool. I'm getting ink all over me, of course, now. And this is a nice little detail for the love of flex that's written right in there. And of course, it takes on the color of the ink. So that's a nice little detail. Now, uh, I don't know the exact story behind the feeds, but on there, apparently these are, are tweaked and adjusted as well to give a little more flex and good snapback as well. It's not just an off the shelf uh, nib. You know, I thought maybe this is, <laughs> I, I'm just getting ink all over me here today. Uh, I thought this was maybe one some, say from Fountain Pen Revolution or Can, right? I don't know if that's maybe how it starts off and they do some tweaking to it, but um, they do some adjustments to this nib to get it right the way it does. And of course fits nicely onto that feed. They have a regular plastic feed and for a few bucks more, I think it's maybe like 15 or something, you can get the special polymer feed. And as I showed you, this thing just goes. And of course, here on the back, you got it comes with a converter. This is a Schmidt converter, so your standard international size and fits in there. When I first got it, it was a little bit uh, snug getting in. I had to just push it a little bit harder the first couple times. And after that, it's on here, no problem as well. So just be aware of that. I'll give you some weights and dimensions. Check the description for all the details. Um, there we are, about what, 46 and three quarter gram pop the cap. So it's heavy, but it doesn't feel crazy heavy just because of the balance of the pen. So the main body is 37.4, um, let's say. So most of the weight actually is just in that big chunk of brass. So 25 grams. So a huge, huge portion of the weight's in there. So that's why this doesn't really, f it, it feels heavy when you first grab it, but in the hand, it's, it's quite nice because all the mass is in the center. So just giving you an idea of length, I included some other metal pens. I have Lamy Dialog, three Diplomat Arrow, and my Enso Titanium. So it's the longest of the batch. Now for a couple pens that it's close to, let me show you those. 
This is my uh, Narwhal Peter Draws Edition Twisby Vac 700 R Iris and my Opus 88 Omar that I just reviewed the other day. This, these two are the closest for length, and it also does fit in my two pen case, which for me is almost a must to uh, have a daily carry pen that I can take with me everywhere. And here we are uncapped, so you can see very similar in length. So I'll put the exact dimensions in the description below, but just I like the visual reference there. Next up, I'll get to a uh, writing sample. I'm going to swap the nib out, try that other untipped nib, and then just kind of walk you through what I like, what I don't like. But I thought for a writing sample, I'm going to do a quick one, because this is one hell of a writing sample. So uh, uh, Sunil also sent me a nice note, tell me about his pen. This is the model R615. And I thought, if we want to showcase beautiful writing, he's got gorgeous writing. So no matter what writing sample I do, I can't beat his. So let's look at that for a moment. Uh, again, it's it's whoever's steering the uh, the pen here can you know maximize what it looks like. But uh, yeah, great writing sample. And thank you again, Sunil, for the note. I'll do a quick one that won't look as nice. And then I'm going to swap out the feed and walk you through a few more things. Do a quick writing sample with the nib here. So... First, I'll just do, you know, regular pressure. I'm not really taking my time to do nice writing. So if you're doing to do some neat printing, it works just fine for that as well. And of course, a little bit of pressure, you get some flex. Let's try to do a flex word. I tried this with my Osprey pen a little earlier. You know, so again, I'm not very skilled at this, but yeah, if you are good at that type of stuff, you can really make this look fancy. So I'm going to pop this feed out and the nib here, put in this untipped one and see how that goes. I've used this pen for regular notes with this nib and had no problem with that. And again, so it's it's not super sensitive. Some of those nibs, if you just touch them, you get this crazy line variation, you might not want that. So it's good for just regular pressure. You can get away with it. And then if you want to push a little bit, uh, you get some flex. So it's very intuitive. Thought I would just show you real quick. I took this to the sink to uh, clean out. Obviously, you don't want to get just ink all over this place here. So the uh, nib and feed all just screw out in a housing like this. You can you kind of saw that on this one here too. And it is also just friction fit. So you could fit other uh, nibs on here. I believe when I was reading the site, they it's just like a standard Yovo nib fits on here so if you have a different nib that you want to put on uh away you go go for a yovo and fit it on there it is keyed as well to align the nib and feet so that's handy you can only put it on one way and just screws in there so even if you have another housing unit you can just you know go in and out hot swap it so i cleaned it out i even put a little pen wash so you know maybe there's a little technique on there i remember him seeing something on his instagram how you get it so it's kind of squeaky clean but that doesn't bother me that all the ink doesn't come out um, but now let's put in this other nib and feed unit so this also has the cool uh what's that say on there uh, calligraphy it says okay so that's like look like it's laser engraved on there screws in you're ready to go pop in your converter slap it back into the pen let's try this puppy out quick little time lapse of that uh, ink flowing into the feed so that's kind of cool obviously uh if you just dip it into the bottle it's going to come out fully coated so i'm using sargasso c by diamine for today anyways let's try out this little untipped nib and see how it goes Yeah. Again, pardon my lack of beautiful flex writing, but I'll try to do that same writing sample I did before. Yeah, this thing's just going to go all day long. And you don't ever write this fast when you're doing flex. Finally a skip. So I just did this writing sample, but forgot to hit record, so I'll just show you again in action. Uh, we got pretty good 
line variation as you can see and you know doing that snap back you can go rapid fire focus we definitely have I would say some serious line variation You mentioned the mango chutney might have a little trouble with the untipped. Because it wants to dig in. It's not too bad. So I would say that's a lot easier than uh, the Zebra G's. The Zebra G, you get even a finer, you know, cross. Uh, it did pick up a little paper. There you go. You can see it in there. Uh, the Zebra G does get even somehow a little bit of a finer cross stroke, I would say. Maybe a touch wider, but it's very similar. But this nib is a lot smoother. With those Zebra Gs, those upstrokes can really grab and pinch. You really have to watch out. So we're getting very similar line variation to the Zebra G. This is also stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about rusting. And it's not as harsh as in stabbing through the paper. That's one thing you really have to watch out with those. So for an untipped nib, this is pretty damn smooth. What do I like? What don't I like about the pen? I really like the pen. I like, I like the size. I like the feel. I like the weight. Yes, it's heavy, but the balance is really good. The fact that the balance point is on center. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's very well made. Fit and finish is all good. Well, finish, it, it's a raw pen, so there's no finish. You can get it with that satin one as well. Um, that might look kind of good. If, if these little you know, wear marks and stuff over time would bug you, I would suggest go with the satin finish. Um, but it is, a, you know, again, a raw aluminum, non-anodized part. Now you might be thinking, anodized, well, doodle bud, you anodize your titanium, anodize this. Titanium is so easy to anodize, as I showed you. You can just MacGyver it with the stuff you got at home. Uh, it's not crazy difficult on aluminum, but you do need a lot more stuff. It's much more costly if you just want to do this homegrown. But um, So I'm not going to be anodizing this pen myself. As far as things I don't like about the pen, there's nothing really I don't like, but there's one thing you might just want to be aware of is when you go to uncap it. So we got the nib and all that on this end, and this is the, the main body, the pen with the converter and whatnot. So if you go to uncap the pen like this, uh, obviously here it's working, but depending how snug you snug the front, the back might open up. Well, here, let me just loosen it. Um, so I'll make this a, not as tight as the cap. And so if you do it this way, then the back of the pen could unscrew. So that's just one thing to be aware of. So uh, when you uncap it, you know, I just grab here and undo it this way. So if that bugs you, that might bug you. Um, the step down, like I said, is totally fine for me. That doesn't bother me. It might bother you. Um, I rest my thumb on it this way, so it's actually quite comfortable. It's like a nice thumb rest. But one thing I thought of, I'm not a lefty, but I thought, well, if you do it this way and you are left-handed, again, you can just hold it. I have no idea how a lefty holds their pen, but you can, whatever way you do, um, you can hold it in the grip section. But if you wanted to hold it further back, again, depending how you hold it, um, you know, your index finger, I guess, would rest on there, but maybe it's it's not going to suit you as much as a right-hander. So just something to be aware of. But um, even the price point on this pen, so it's from the UK, so it's in pounds, 100 pounds for the basic model with the standard uh, flex nib and the plastic feed. The I think it's similar for the untipped as well with the plastic. If you want to ante up and get the custom uh, polymer feed it's an extra 15 bucks and uh, so again I, I can't compare the two feeds I only got the polymers for both of them but as you can see this sucker throws down serious ink so you know for an all metal machine pen with customized nibs and a custom one-off feed you can't buy anywhere I think that's a reasonable price and especially for the performance that you saw as well so big thanks to Sunil for contact and of all people the doodle bud to test out your pen for a first go, first time making a fountain pen. Buddy, what a good job you did. You got this custom polymer feed. You got this beautiful CNC machine pen. It performs like crazy, beating the crap out of a lot of pens that try to perform like this, especially when it comes to flex. So 
great pen. I think your pricing is pretty good as well. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how this pen progresses and other stuff you come out with as well. Uh, comments, questions, subscriptions are always super welcome. I'm also going to uh, encourage Sunil to check out the comment section and reply to some of your questions. He's far more equipped to answer the questions you have. Check out his website as well for more details. But uh, thanks again. I thoroughly enjoyed using this pen, trying it out, testing it, and this thing performs like a beast. So until then, we will just catch you next time.